Melissa. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel. For today's video, I am sharing with you my top eight tips on what to do when you're feeling stuck in life or what to do when you're feeling lost. I have tried out these eight tips myself and they really helped me over the last month or so. So I thought I would share them with you and maybe you could find them helpful too. If you do find these tips helpful, be sure to subscribe. Let's just get right into my eight tips for helping you get unstuck in life. The first tip is to release the pressure on yourself. There's a quote that I heard from Tony Robbins. I was just gonna read it to you guys so that way I don't butcher this quote because I thought it was really good. In order for you to feel like you're enough, many people believe that they have to achieve an enormous amount. A lot of the pain in our society is not because there's one right or one wrong way to do things but because we try to make everybody fit into some specific approach to life. I think that's really interesting because I know for me personally I can sometimes get stuck in a cycle of thinking of how things should be. Quick little side note too, if you haven't seen my other videos I am a huge advocate of like getting the help that you need and I don't think there's anything wrong with going to therapy. Like I go to therapy myself and I love it, it's great. <laughs> it's helped me really work through a lot of this type of stuff. As far as it goes with releasing that pressure on yourself, you know that quote from Tony Robbins brings up a really good point because I think a lot of times we're focused on how our lives should be and how things are perceived on social media and I think it can be really easy to internalize that and start to get down on ourselves. I should be at this point in my life right now. I think it can just be easy to put a lot of pressure on ourselves. When we are feeling lost in life, I think a lot of that has to do with we're too focused on how things should be instead of looking at how things are. I noticed when I started to just release the pressure on myself and be like, okay, this is how it is. Maybe this isn't exactly where I wanna be right now, but this is where I am at in this point in my life. It is what it is. Right now in this moment, I cannot change my circumstances. Now the actions I can take moving forward will change that and affect that outcome But in this second in this moment right here right now I cannot actually change what's happening in that sense It takes a lot of the pressure off of you because you're not beating yourself up I think a lot of that has to do with focusing too much on the way things should be instead of the way things are So when you change your perspective on that a little bit, it can help you release that pressure on yourself Another thing that I heard in this Tony Robbins video and I'll try and link it down below if I can find the video that I'm referring to talking about our blueprint and I think it was such an interesting concept I've never thought about it this way before but it was sharing that in our minds at any given time we have a blueprint of what we think each area in our life should look like our relationships our career our home life our work life our school life whatever categories you have in your life right now you have an idea of what that should look like and that's what he was calling your blueprint if your blueprint doesn't match what your current reality is then you are not happy with that current situation if it does match your blueprint or your perspective of what you think that it should look like then you consider it you know that you're happy in that area or that you're happy with that area of your life so what i did with this was i kind of made it into my own little journaling exercise because i love me and my journals and i actually wrote down you know what is one area of my life i'm happy with right now and wrote that out in detail and got really specific and then i wrote down what specifically I thought that should look like in my head and it did match really well. And I did the same thing with an area of my life that I'm unhappy with and it was the same thing. My blueprint was what I thought it should be and it didn't match what my current reality is in that area. It was kind of an interesting idea to see it from that perspective of thinking of it as a blueprint because a blueprint, where does that come from? Your blueprint or your perspective of how things should be comes from what you're exposed to. It's really important to be aware of what we are exposing our subconscious to and being aware of the books that we're reading, the TV shows we're watching, the music we're listening to, and just being aware of how all of that can factor in affecting our subconscious and how we're perceiving our life. That's my first tip is to release that pressure, whether it's doing that exercise that I mentioned or just kind of accepting where things are and accepting that in this very moment, right this second, your life is what it is and you're meant to be here. My next tip is to just change things up, switch it up. I think a lot of times we get stuck in the same old day-to-day -day routines and it can be really easy to just kind of let things go and let life just start passing you by and we're just going through the motions of day-to-day -day things. But when we actually stop and take some time to think about why we're doing the things that we're doing on a daily basis, we might find that there's some room to switch things up. I know for me, I am a huge advocate of routines and getting into a routine, but I'm also a big advocate of switching that up. Like I can always tell if I'm getting too used to a routine because I lose interest in it or I'm 
way unmotivated to continue doing it and it can just be as simple as switching up the order of how you do things or what time of day you do things. I definitely think routines can help establish a little bit of structure to help you get unstuck in life but I also think that routines can keep you kind of chained to an older way of thinking that may no longer be serving you. So something to think about if you are feeling stuck in life and you're feeling a little lost, it can help to just try something new or switch things up. A great example that I used personally was when I took my first kickboxing class. You don't already know, I am a kickboxer. I love getting fit and punching a bag and sweating it out. And the first time I went in to take my first kickboxing class, I was absolutely terrified. Like, it's the scariest thing I ever did. But getting me out of my comfort zone and pushing myself to do something like that, that was so incredibly outside of my current reality of what I was doing with my fitness and just my life in general. It was a way big step for me. It really pushed me into a new phase of life. It pushed me into a new circle of people. It exposed me to so many other perspectives of what life could be like and it gave me so many opportunities from there. Try something new, even if it's to just take a new yoga class or try out a class at your local gym or not even fitness related. It can be to go take a painting class or you try and pick up a new hobby and see if you can maybe attend a meetup for something like that. Anything to shake up your current day-to-day -day routine and add a little bit of something extra into your daily life because that alone is going to force you to see things from a new perspective and that's going to automatically start to help you feel a little bit unstuck. Tip number three is to be present. This is definitely something that I am continuously working on on a daily basis. When I am aligned and I really feel like I'm present and mindful in the moment rather than stressing about knowing every single detail about the future and stressing about what I'm doing next week or what's going to happen with this particular situation and just stressing about things that haven't even happened yet, that's where I feel like I get the most stuck and the most overwhelmed and just feeling so lost and confused. That is the biggest thing for me personally that I'm working on is to be present in the moment. Meditation has been great for this for me. I've really found that even meditating just for five to 10 minutes a day, I feel much more centered and much more present and grounded. Uh, it's definitely a work in progress. I would recommend if you've never done any kind of meditation before, I started with the Headspace app. Headspace for me was really great. I got a Groupon at the beginning of last year for Headspace for a year and it was deeply discounted. I tried it out and I loved it. it. Taught me some really great mindful techniques that I still use today. So definitely recommend Headspace. Anything you can do to just keep yourself present in the moment. In the grand scheme of things, we live our lives in the moment. That is where life happens is right now. So how you spend your time and what you spend your time focusing on, that's how you're living your day-to-day -day life. So if you're constantly stressing and thinking about the future and everything that hasn't happened yet, I think that's when we start to get overwhelmed and we start to just feel really discontent and anxious. I think that's where a lot of, personally, that's where my a lot of my anxiety comes from. And I just think it can be really easy to get stressed and feel stuck when we're not being present in the moment. Tip four is baby steps. So what do I mean by baby steps? The best thing I have found, this probably should have been higher on my list now that I'm thinking about it, but <laughs> for me personally, I can get overwhelmed so easily when it comes to feeling lost and confused and feeling like I don't know where my life is going. And the biggest thing that's helped me is just taking it a teeny tiny step at a time. I was feeling kind of stuck and in a funk. I just started to try to do a little bit each day. Even if there were some days that I felt like it was like a struggle to just get up, I really fell off of my fitness routine, which is something that always makes me feel very grounded. What I decided to do was instead of saying like, okay, I'm gonna work out for two hours every single day. I'm just gonna go and work out for 15 minutes, get my heart rate up, and I'm gonna go home. And that small baby step led to me going back the next day and the next day. And then I slowly was able to increase the time a little bit more and get up to where I was before. But I think the way that I was able to do that was because I wasn't putting pressure on myself to take this giant leap in one day. I wasn't going from not working out for the last couple weeks to, well, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go work out for an hour and a half and I'm gonna do weights and I'm gonna do strength training and I'm gonna do cardio and it was like, I, you know, I didn't overwhelm myself with that. Because I think when we're in a state of feeling overwhelmed and feeling stressed, and feeling lost, I think it can be very easy to internalize that and not want to do anything. At least for me, I tend to get overwhelmed when I feel stuck and lost and I just feel like, well, if I can't do anything then, I'm just gonna lay here and watch Netflix. Not the most healthiest ways 
to handle things, I realize. That's why taking these baby steps really helps. Like th this is one of the biggest things that I do consistently to help me if I'm kind of, even just having an off day, you know, maybe you're not in a funk, you're just kind of having an off day. That helps too. Just take a little bit of a step towards something that you know will make you feel better. Something just that's going to move you in a direction because once you feel like you're moving, you're going to feel unstuck. Tip five is to express gratitude. I have talked about this in so many of my videos. Gratitude and staying consistent with a gratitude practice has been such a game changer for me. I'll either journal or I'll even put it in my notes app, in my phone. Even if it's just one thing a day, even if I'm just laying in my bed at night and I'm just like, okay, what happened today? What am I thankful for that happened today? Even just that little bit of of awareness of what is already in your life. It sounds like such a small thing, but it really does make a difference. It's helped me so much. Expressing gratitude is also a great way to move you back into the moment. So we were talking about being present before and expressing gratitude is a great way to do that. It helps you hone in on right here, right now, what has happened in the last few hours instead of, oh my God, what's gonna happen tomorrow? What's gonna happen the next day? And again, taking it small steps at a time, building on all of these tips. You don't have to write 20 things that you're thankful for that day. It could just be, I had a really good cup of coffee in the morning. It will play out into helping you feel better overall about where you're at. So if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I absolutely love my journals. I love filling my notebooks. Whenever I am at a point where I'm feeling stuck in my life, or I'm feeling lost, I tend to journal significantly more. For me, when I am feeling stuck, journaling just helps me clear my thoughts out. It helps me see what is actually making me feel stuck. A lot of times I would get confused and be like, oh, you know, I'm feeling so stuck in life. I don't know what I'm doing with my career. Or I don't know what I'm doing with my job. And a lot of times it would have nothing to do with that. Once I started journaling and writing about it, I found out like, oh no, I'm actually stressed about this relationship in my life. Or I'm stressed out because of X problem that I'm going through or whatever it is. It really shed some light on what I was actually feeling stuck in. Something else that Tony Robbins mentioned in that video, a lot of times the areas that we're most uncomfortable with or we're the least satisfied with are actually where we spend the least time in which I think is so interesting so because it's out of our comfort zone because it's an area that we're not satisfied with we just kind of lock it up in a little pretty box and put it under the bed and don't look at it again whether it's journaling or maybe you just are meditating on it whatever works for you uh, for me, writing has always been the way that I express myself best. Journaling just really sheds light on where you're feeling stuck so you can actually start to apply these other tips to that particular area of your life. Tip seven is to get outside. I know this is a little bit different than the other tips, but getting outside is just so clearing. For me, like I love taking my puppy Bailey out on walks and maybe you just go sit at the park for a few minutes and listen to a podcast or read a good book or something like that but even just being in the outside air I feel like it's just very cleansing I think it's a great way to clear your head to just be in nature and it's also another great way to help you be more present in the moment so all of these tips kind of build on top of each other and my last and final tip tip number eight is to take care of yourself I know this sounds a little obvious, but when I'm feeling stuck and when I'm feeling lost in life, the first thing to go is my self-care. I really found that when I take some time to get myself ready for the day, something to kind of make you feel a little bit pampered, a little bit refreshed, a little bit of a happy boost, at least for me it does. I always feel so refreshed and ready to be productive and conquer the world after I do something like that. So those are my eight tips to help you if you are feeling stuck or if you feel lost in life. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I upload videos weekly. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you are having a wonderful week and I'll see you guys in my next video.